Janice. Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I am very excited to be speaking with you about all the old knives. Thank you. This is a real thrill ride. Watching this film is like reading a Tom Clancy or John Le Carre novel. Mm. It's with every scene. It's if this were in paper, you're like turning the page. You can't turn the page fast enough to see what's unfolding. This is such a great thriller, Janice. Thank you so much. Riveting. The tension is unrelenting. Your work with Mark on the editing, it's rapier. And the way you, you have structured this with a nonlinear format as we go back in time and come forward. And then your superb cinematography that Charlotte Christensen has done. The way that she uses light and lens and you have a color tonal shift between past and present. Everything is so perfectly constructed here, Janice. I am beyond impressed. Mm -hmm. well, thank you very much. That's, that's great to hear. When you got this script from Olin, where do you even start? Because there's so many ways that you could do a film like this. You could visually uh, bring this to life. So where do you yeah. start? Um, where do I start? Well, this, as you said, there's so many ins and outs of this film, and, and they have to work together yeah. in unison for the <laughs> film to work. So, I mean, on the one hand, you have sort of a twisty, turny spy story that has to work, and it has to be kind of solid, bulletproof, without kind of revealing itself too early. So you want to make sure that those steps are kind of worked out and you go back and forth over the, the plot line and, you know, make sense of it because that's going to also inform the, the scene work and the character work. So I think, you know, first of all, it started with a deep interrogation of the script mm -hmm. and making sure that the script was in the best possible uh, place before the shoot. So we would... You know, we would do revisions and, and you know, uh, rewritings. You know, I, I collaborated very closely with Olin in terms of, you know, making sure that, that, that the story was as good as we could possibly imagine it and envision it to be. And then, you know, for me, that, that there's, you know, there's the one thing, there's the plot line, and then there's the character, the character work and the character development, and those two things have to work in sync. Um, so understanding who Henry and Celia are in the story and why, you know, they do what they do and what makes them go and, and what's the sort of more profound and deeper sort of exploration of, the, of that character work was important. And I, I you know... From an early stage, I started doing readings with Chris and Tandyway to find out, you know, what are the, you know, what are the best versions of the scenes? How can we, how can we make this as, you know, uh, emotionally driven and relevant and present as possible? You know, what are the, what are the, what are the necessities for the, you know, can we take away all the unnecessary line so that we're just, you know, keeping that tension as alive and palpable as possible. Mm -hmm. Well, you definitely succeeded. And I'm glad you talked about the character work because I have to tell you, the performances, especially from, uh, from Chris and Thandaway, are just incredible, as well as Jonathan Price. And here's where your work with, with Charlotte is so key. And using those extreme close-ups, it's not often you see this many extreme close-ups in a film, but it works so well here because everything about performance in this film boils down to the blink of an eye. Is someone biting their lower lip? Are beads of sweat breaking out on their head? All these telltale signs of lying or subterfuge. And... It is so brilliantly designed, Janice. That had to be extremely difficult to coordinate for you and Charlotte to do the camera block and camera design, the visual grammar on this, yeah. and cue it with these performances. Yeah. No, a lot of work went into that and in, in prepping that. And, 
and realizing, you know, when are the climactic moments and and the and the and the uh, you know when do we move in with the camera to to uh, interrogate those moments and exactly what you were saying what was so important was this kind of like minimalist approach to the the acting you know when does when does a little sweat on the upper lip or a twitch of the eye give away the character and and it was crucial to to this film to get that right obviously it's something that you you plan for and you set it up but you cannot you know you can't tell an actor now twitch your eye yeah. <laughs> you have to create the context for that to happen for and for the emotion for the emotional work of the characters to be to make that uh sort of you know transpire in the scene and uh and that was really where you know you know, the, the, the two things have to go hand in hand. The, the, you know, how you work with, with, you know, the collaboration between the director and the actors in terms of how do we get this essentially what's almost like a theater uh, chamber play to work and how do we capture that with the camera? How does the camera work elevate and, and, and narrate the story so, so that it becomes a piece of, you know, cinematic truth? Mm-hmm. And I think Shalada was, uh, you know, a really important player in this because she was so, you know, also sensitive to these moments and, and, and the conversations that her and I could have. And, and sometimes we would even bring Chris and Tandyway and Jonathan and Lawrence into those conversations that now we move in. And this is where we, you know, we really uh, push the button of, you know, now is where the coin drops and we're right up close and we're, you know, we're just looking at your eyes and, you know, so, so you, you are, you know, you're administering also the energy of, of the performances to kind of unleash in certain moments. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's just brilliant. And I love what the two of you did with Lawrence because so often when he's in conversation with Chris's character of Henry, we get a profile. We get him turning his head away, almost like he can't look him in the eye. Yeah. And it makes you wonder, okay, what's he up to? Mm. At some point in this I'm film... So glad, I'm so glad you're picking up on that, because that oh. was a big... Actually, that thing in particular was such a big thing about how we talked about Lawrence's performance, that sometimes, you know, you have what's being said to the other character on screen, but they're obviously playing double double game, you know, yes. game of duplicity and double crossings. And then if your character turns his, his head and looks off to the side, and maybe you play the negative space behind the character, you're, you're revealing the secret. Or, or maybe you're revealing the secret by the fact that they're holding a gaze a little too long. Mm-hmm. It's also part of the editing, you know, normally... Yeah. You know, I mean, you, you cut from a line to a reaction. But if you want an actor to keep the secret, you, maybe you keep the, the cut a little longer before you cut to the reaction, and you play the, the you play the pause on on either side of the cut to 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 sort of elevate the the sense of tension or the sense of secret between them. So so this was left, right, and center to everything we did. You know, how do we make sure that these people become the best possible liars, and that we <laughs> We, as an audience, hook into that, and we see, you know, we see the, the the spy game unfolding between them. You have just done it so beautifully, and yes, Lawrence. That scene with Lawrence, that is a killer, Janice. That is a killer. But Chris, well, Chris is the one that really holds his stares, and I I love what you've done, visually and with Chris's performance between past and present you real so often with non-linear films people can get disoriented and lost when they're trying to follow it that's not a problem here number one you've got chris with a wig with longer hair sloppy clothes he looks like a dirty undercover cop almost uh mm. popping around well, europe as much as chris can look like a dirty yeah cop, uh, <laughs> not like a god from the ancient greeks yes but then there, Charlotta actually, 
you use a lot of drone and crane shots so that we feel very metaphoric for being a fly on the wall and also letting us see a wider landscape of where this is playing out. And you changed your color tone up between past and present as well. Mm. That yeah. I really, I love the past. You had that kind of yellowish tinge. Yeah. That, you know, almost like a metaphoric sickly, that something sick is happening. And yeah, then we get... a very sort of bleak representation, I think, of, of Vienna, and it's cold, it's winter, mm -hmm. it's... Uh, uh, you know, and that's obviously contrasted with sunny California. So, so there's just, you know, also just a geographical journey in that. But, but what you're saying, I, I like what you're saying because I'm, you know, I put a lot of attention into the meaning of, of each and every shot that we construct for, for whichever movie I'm shooting. And, and there is... There's almost, I, I like to think of my cinematography as having this kind of third dimension. We're, mm -hmm. we're, we're talking about, you know, uh, a dimension in, in the images that, that works as a backdrop to the story. Yes. This story has a lot to do with, with loneliness and with, with paranoia and sort of, you know, the way, the way both Henry and Celia have become traumatized by the events of the past and how we are almost looking in at those two people who have to find, find, you know, reconcile themselves with the events of the past and find a way to, to you know, make sense of it and, 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 and live on. And, um, and uh, you know... That's almost that for me. There's there, that's where there's almost like a, a, a third eye or godlike perspective, mm -hmm. I'd say, into the movies. It's like looking at people who are struggling and and looking down and and you know. Uh, I guess it's also part of the reason I like you know wide landscapes and drone shots and it, because it places us on the ground as like you know humble small individual that, you know, can end up in terrible places or with difficult choices. And we're not always, you know, able to do the right thing. And, you know, it doesn't always end up in the best way for us. So, you know, there's, there's, a, there's an existential dimension to, to that and also to the way that I use cinematography. Mm -hmm. that I really like. And Shalada was obviously, you know, a great collaborator in, in bringing that to, you know, its most perfect sort of uh, expression. I have to ask you about your score, the score from John and Rebecca. This yeah. is not what I would have expected for a quote-unquote spy kind of thriller. Mm. This real, and this just adds another element of yeah. gamesmanship, shall we say. What were you looking for musically? as a backdrop or undercurrent to this? Yeah, well, I think it's the same as what we just talked about in the cinematography, that there's a, there's a, there's a deep sort of tragic existential dimension to, to the story, which is almost about, you know, how do you become, you know, how do you become a, a better version of yourself? Or how do you sort of... Uh, find resolution or catharsis with your life choices and you know are you the sum of the your actions or are you really or is there a deeper truth in your heart that becomes compromised by your life situations and and so, so to me there's there is almost a um sort of transcendent uh character journey that, that the music has to unfold. It's almost a, 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 you know, a religious undertone to the music, and not that the film is religious, but I, I think you, you understand what I'm yes. saying when, when, when you know, there's something bigger than the characters that drive, the, that feeds into the story. Um, some sort of longing or desire to, to belong, and mm -hmm. to understand your place in the world. Yeah, 
And I think that that's what the music is is kind of telling us in many of the scenes. There's a there's an epic quality to that that I like to unfold because you could have played this very sort of on the nose thriller, driving all the way through danger, etc. But the music kind of takes the film into a deeper sort of character exploration. The music becomes a character here, Janice. It really does. Oh, Janice, this has been so lovely to get to talk to you today. I know they have to move you along. I yeah. hope we get to talk again in the future. This is, I, hope so. I mean, I loved your work in Borg versus McEnroe, but this is just wow. Wow. You, you are John LeCare and Tom Clancy rolled together on film. Thank you. Oh, great. Thank you, Janice. Bye bye. Yeah.